بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور مهدثاتها وكل مهدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers, so um, last lesson we finished uh, the subject on Al-Wala Wal-Bara so whoever needs to revise that I'll go through it again you can go to the previous two lessons <clears throat> but now we uh we've reached the uh the third treatise or part of uh this book um and it covers uh what's called al hanifiya and the sheikh is going to explain to us what al hanifiya is and what it constitutes and what's obligatory upon the muslim to know about it and why and so um the Sheikh begins and he says, Al-Risala to Thalitha to Al-Hanifiya to Milla to Ibrahim. And then he says, Ta'rif Al-Hanifiya. So he says, the third three, uh, uh, the third treaties, Al-Hanifiya is the way of Ibrahim. And Al-Hanifiya at the moment, we don't know what that is, but we'll learn about that now, inshallah. The Sheikh can explain it. So he says, the Sheikh says, Havidullah, he says, Ta'rif, Ta'rif Al-Hanifiya. So the, um, uh, explanation or uh, the definition, shall we say, the definition of Al Hanifiya. What is it? What does it mean? So then the Shaykh says, says here, In Al Hanifiya, Milatu Ibrahim, indeed, Al Hanifiya is the way of Ibrahim. And the Shaykh continues and he says, Qawluhu, In Al Hanifiya, Milatu Ibrahim, Ay Alladi Yajibu, and Ta'alamahu, wa an Ta'arifahu, and Al Hanifiya, Milatu Ibrahim. وَالْحَانَفُ فِي اللُّغَةِ الْمَيْلِ So the Shaykh says, and he repeats what we mentioned in the title, uh, that indeed Al-Hanifiyya is the way of Ibrahim, i.e. it is that which is obligatory upon us to know and to learn and have knowledge of. And so the Shaykh says, Al-Hanifiyya or Al-Hanaf, it means... Uh, in the language, it means to uh, move away from something. So it's to move away from something. In the Arabic language, al-mail, linguistically. Yeah. And then the Sheikh, he continues and he says, فَمَعْنَا الْحَنِيفِيَّةِ هِيَ الْلُغَةِ هِيَ, الم... هي الْمِلَّةُ الْمَائِلَةُ عَنِ الشِّرْكِ إِلَى التَّوْحِيدِ وَإِبْرَاهِيمَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا حَنِيفًا أي مَائِلًا عن الشرك وَمُعْرِضًا عَنْهُ إِلَى التَّوْحِيدِ وَلِإِخْلَاسِ لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ قَالَ تَعَالَى إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ كَانَ أُمَّةً قَانِتًا لِلَّهِ حَنِيفًا وَلَمْ يَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ سورة النحل verse 120 فالحنيف من أوصاف إبراهيم عليه السلام بمعنى أنه مؤرض عن الشرك ومائل عنه بالكلية إلى التوحيد متوجه بكل وجهته إلى التوحيد والإخلاص لله عز وجل قال الله تعالى ثم أوحينا إليك أن اتبع ملة إبراهيم حنيفة سورة النحل verse 123 وقال سبحانه ما كان إبراهيم يهوديا ولا نصرانيا ولكن كان حنيفا مسلما وما كان من المشركين سورة آل إمران verse uh, 68 so we'll just stop there we'll ask the whole paragraph there there's quite a lot there for this let's just stop there so the shaykh he says he says the meaning of al hanifiya it is is the way of it it's the way of ibrahim and it's the way of moving it's moving away and going far away from shirk it's moving away from shirk and going towards tawhid so just uh, so that's exactly what it means and the Sheikh says, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was, he was Hanifan, 
he was upon this way Hanifan and he was a Muslim as in he he moved away from shirk and to tawheed and he was in submission to Allah of course Muslim Hanifan i.e. moving away from shirk and rejecting it and turning away from it and going towards tawheed and uh, and purely worshipping Allah for his sake alone and that's what it means that's exactly what that means that should be clear to us and then the Shaykh brings an ayah for us uh, for clarity um, from, from Surah Al-Nahl so if we uh, go to this Surah Surah Al-Nahl um, verse 120 let's read that verse 120 in Surah Al-Nahl Verily, Ibrahim, Abraham, was an ummah, a leader, having all the good righteous qualities or a nation obedient to Allah, Hanifa, i.e. to worship none but Allah, and he was not one of those who were al-mushrikun, polytheists, idolaters, disbelievers in the oneness of Allah, and those who joined partners with Allah. So that's clear. And um, it's worth noting now that we've come across the word uh, ummatun. It doesn't always necessarily mean um, nation as we know it to be depending on the context and what's being said Ummah can have different meanings like an imam a leader a nation etc we'll come through the, we'll probably uh, pass other examples inshallah and go over them we'll see that but just remember that it's worth knowing that that Ummah doesn't only mean nation as we all know it it depends on the context then the shaykh continues and says he says so this Hanif, it's from, uh, it's from the uh, attributes of Ibrahim and from the, his characteristics, Ibrahim alayhi salam, meaning that it turn, it, it means that it, it means to turn away from shirk and move away from it and reject it with all completeness of that of the word rejecting going on completeness completely rejecting it uh, and moving towards Tawheed and being upon Tawheed uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with all of the severity of that word meaning so it's completely going away from shirk and going towards Tawheed being free from shirk basically and uh, worshipping Allah uh, sincerely for his sake yeah ikhlas with ikhlas with, uh, purely for the sake of Allah and then the shaykh mentions another ayah so he says uh, Allah, uh, Allah, uh, Allah Ta'ala says and uh, uh, that was from Surah to, uh, that was from Surah Nahal, verse 123, from the same Surah, two verses down. It mentions another ayah, which we read. And the meaning of that is, the translation of it, Then we have inspired you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Follow the religion of Ibrahim, Abraham, Hanifa, Islamic monotheism, to worship none but Allah. And he was not of the mushrikun, he was not of the polytheists, idolaters and disbelievers. So that's clear to us as well. So we carry on. Uh, and then another ayah from Surah Al Imran. So let's go there and have a look at the translation of that ayah, verse 67. Ibrahim, Abraham was neither a Jew nor a Christian, but he was a true Muslim, Hanifa, Islamic monotheism, to worship none but Allah alone, and he was not of the polytheists, Al Mushrikun. So that's clear now. We, we know what Al Hanifiyah means, Al Hanif means, Al Hanaf. All these words are related to that. We know what they mean now. <clears throat> so we continue. So the Sheikh says, he continues and he says, هذه أوصاف إبراهيم عليه السلام العظيمة منها أنه كان حنيفا وأن ملته الحنيفية وهي الملة الخالصة لله عز وجل التي ليس فيها شرك وقد أمر الله نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم أن يتبع هذه الملة بقوله ثم أوحينا إليك أن اتبع ملة إبراهيم حنيفا وما كان من المشركين سورة النحل verse 123 وأمرنا نحن كذلك أن نتبع ملة إبراهيم عليه السلام قال تعالى هو اشتباكم وما جعل عليكم في الدين من حرج ملة, ملة أبيكم إبراهيم هو سماكم المسلمين Surah Al-Hajj, verse 78. وَهِيَ دِينُ جَمِيعِ الرُّسُلِ So let's go through that uh, paragraph there. 
So then the Shaykh says, he says, so uh, these are from the characteristics of Ibrahim alayhi salam. You know, great, magnificent characteristics of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And from that is um, that he was Hanifan. And now we understand what Hanifan means. And and that his way was of the Millatu al-Hanifiyyah. Al yeah, as when they say, when we hear this and we heard this here and read this, Millatu um, al-Hanifiyyah or Millatu Ibrahim means the same thing. And then the Sheikh says, and here, and it, and here it is, um, the uh, it's the way of, of purely worshiping Allah alone upon Tawheed, yeah, and uh, away from Shirk, and not associating partners with Allah, which of course is Shirk. And the Sheikh says, and indeed, Allah commanded uh, his Prophet, I Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, that he follows in this way. The way of Ibrahim, yeah, Mila to Ibrahim, Al Hanifiya, and so we we read this ayah already, and we read the translation from Surah uh, Nahal, verse 123. But then the Sheikh also mentions another ayah, which will go through the translation of now. So he mentions that we've also us who us as in the Muslims as well. We are we have also like that have been commanded to follow in the way of Ibrahim, alayhi salam, Mila to Ibrahim. So we, we read this in Arabic, so we will go to the translation. So this is in Surah Al-Hajj. So let's go there. Surah Al-Hajj, verse 78. So we'll just read the part. It's a long ayah. We can just read the part which the sheikhs mentioned. <clears throat> well, what we'll do is let's read the whole ayah. I think that's better for us. Let's read the whole ayah. And strive hard in Allah's cause as you ought to strive with sincerity and with all your efforts that his name should be superior. He has chosen you to convey his message of Islamic monotheism to mankind by inviting them to his religion, Islam, and the religion of your father, Ibrahim, Abraham, Islamic monotheism. It is he, Allah, who has named you Muslims both before and in, his, in this the Quran. That the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam may be a witness over you and you be witnesses over mankind. So perform a salat, ikamat a salat, give zakat and hold fast to Allah, i.e. have confidence in Allah and depend upon Him in all of your affairs. He is your Mawla, patron, Lord, etc. What an excellent Mawla, patron, Lord, etc. And what an excellent helper. So... Uh, that uh, helps us understand what we've been uh, reading, what the Sheikh's been explaining to us as well. And the bit that we should focus on as well in particular uh, is um, here. It is he, Allah, who has named you Muslims both before and in this, the Quran. That the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam may be a witness over you and you, be a witness over mankind. So so you can see that we Allah named us, you know, we've been named Muslims. And, and so, you know, that's our duty to worship Allah uh, only and not associate partners with him. So we continue. And the Sheikh also mentions at the end of this paragraph that um, you can see the cursor there at the bottom um, that uh, this is the uh, religion and way of all of the messengers. وَلَكِنْ لِكَوْنِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ عَلَيْهِ سَلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ أَفْضَلَ أَنْبِيَاءَ بَعْدَ نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَدْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ لَاقَ فِي سَبِيلِ الدَّعْوَةِ إِلَى التَّوْحِيدِ مِنَ التَّعْذِيبِ وَمِنَ الْإِمْتِحَانِ مَا لَمْ يَلْقَهُ غَيْرَ فصبر على ذلك ولكونه أبا الأنبياء فإن الأنبياء, فإن الأنبياء الذين جاءوا من بعده كلهم من ذرية عليه الصلاة والسلام فالحنيفية ملة جميع الأنبياء وهي الدعوة إلى التوحيد والنهي عن الشرك هذه ملة جميع الرسل لكن لما كان لإبراهيم مواقف خاصة نحو هذه الملة نُسِبَتْ إِلَيْهِ وَلِمَنْ جَاءَ بَعْدَهُ وَالْأَنْبِيَاءُ كُلُّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنْ تَعْبَدَ اللَّهُ كُلُّهُمْ مِنْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ وَمِنْ بَعْدِهِ كَانُوا عَلَى مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَهِيَ مِلَّةُ التَّوْحِيدِ وَالْإِخْلَاصِ لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ So then the Sheikh just mentioned that he says so in terms of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam he is the best of the prophets after our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, obviously we know that the best of the Prophets and Messengers is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's, um, 
Ibrahim alayhi salam. And that's because, you know, he faced and was met, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam was met with, he was met with many, you know, during his da'wah to call to Tawheed as Allah commanded him uh, to call his people to Tawheed. He, you know, he, uh, you know, from the uh, punishments, you know, the, 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 the uh, you know, from the people, the so-called punishments that the people tried you know, to harm him, and the harms that he came upon, and the tests and trials that he came upon. I think that's fair to say that. Um, and and and, what, and all those sort of harms that he faced and trials that he faced, uh, many others did not actually face such trials, and that and he was a patient upon that. And so, from the nature of this, uh, that's why uh, you know we hear that he's a he's the a father of the prophets. Yeah, and then the Sheikh says, indeed, you know, the, the prophets, those who came after Ibrahim alayhi salam, they are all from his progeny. So all of the prophets that came after uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, they are all from the progeny of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So al hanifiya so going back to this word, al hanifiya is the way of all of the prophets. And it is the call to Tawheed. And it's the uh, and it's the prohibi prohibition of shirk, and this is the the way of all of the of the messengers. However, with regards to uh, it mentions here with regards to Ibrahim, you know there are uh, stations or situations specific uh, to him, and so that's why you know a milla to Ibrahim, as we said, you know al Hanifiya is the mill is the milla of Ibrahim, as with Ibrahim is being um, um, sort of is being associated with. Uh, the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. This is the reason. And all and the Sheikh mentions all of them be all of the prophets uh, that came after him, uh, they are they are upon the way of Ibrahim. Yeah? Uh, and now we understand that. And it is the way of Tawheed and purely worshipping Allah alone and not committing or mixing worship, any acts of worship with shirk. With, uh, you know, mixing your worship with the, towards others other than Allah, which obviously is shirk. So that's clear now to us. Now let's continue. <clears throat> so the Shaykh continues and he says, مَا هِيَ هَذِي الْمِلَّةُ الَّتِي أُمِرَ النَّبِيُّنَا صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ بِتِبَائِهَا وَأُمِرْنَا بِتِبَائِهِ يَجِبُ عَلَيْنَا أَنْ نَعْرِفَهَا لِأَنَّ الْمُسْلِمَ يَجِبُ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَعْرِفَ مَا أَوْجَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْلِ أَنْ يَمْتَثِلَ ومن أجل أن لا يخل به لا يكفي الانتساب بدون معرفة بدون معرفة لا يكفي أن ينتسب للإسلام وهو لا يعرف أو لا يعرف ولا يعرف ما هي نواقض الإسلام وما هي شرايا الإسلام وأحكام الإسلام ولا يكفي الانتساب لملة إبراهيم وأنت لا تعرفها وأنت لا تعرفها وإذا سئلت عنها تقول لا أدري هذا لا يجوز يجب أن تعرف يجب أن تعرفها جيدا من أجل أن تسير عليها على بصيرة وأن لا تخل وأن لا تخل بشيء منها. so the sheikh there he continues and he says so he says uh, what is this you know so he's continuing, obviously we know the introduction. So he repeats again and then he isn't explaining in more detail. So he mentions, he says, so what is this, um, you know, this way that uh, that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was commanded with and also that it, uh, it was commanded to follow and, and also that we were also commanded to follow this way. He says it's obligatory upon us that we know what it is because the Muslim, it's obligatory upon him that he knows what Allah is obligated upon him to know in order for him to then carry out and act out what's, what he has been commanded with and in order for him to not um, uh, let's say not uh, fall short it's not sufficient that we just um, uh, kind of say oh yeah um, we know about that you know, we're Muslims, we know about Milat Ibrahim, we heard about that, you know, we know about the word and, and, and the likes of that is not enough. Just associating yourself with it only is not enough. It doesn't, it's not sufficient that we just associate ourselves with Islam and we don't know what it is. For example, that we associate ourselves with um, 
Islam and then we don't know what the nullifiers of Islam are. So, you know, these things, so that we are sourcing ourselves with Islam, but we don't actually know what it actually is and what what's our what our obligations are and what we're supposed to be doing as a Muslim. Also, the Sheikh says, for example, the rules and regulations of that are contained, you know, with Islam, we need to know what these are to be able to live our life. Yeah. Uh, so it's not sufficient for just to us to associate ourselves with Millat Ibrahim, the way of Ibrahim, uh, you know, the way of the Prophet Sallallahu for example. Rather, we need to know what it is that we're associating ourselves to. We need to know what it is. For example, the Sheikh says, so uh, if you were asked about it, you would say, you, you may say, you'd say, well, I don't know. I don't know the answer. The Sheikh says, this is not permissible to give this kind of answer. He says, obligatory upon you or us to know the affairs of Islam that pertain to us a very in 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 a, you know it's absolutely necessary for us to know we have to it's an obligation in order for us to traverse upon that path of Islam and upon insight so we're not just blindly going left right and center no that we're upon we're traversing that path we're traveling upon that path with insight clear insight and so that and in and therefore then we avoid the shortfalls that we may fall into you know so we can avoid these shortfalls or falling short in, in, in our duties. So then the Shaykh continues and uh, he says, قوله, أن تعبد الله وحده مخلصا له الدين هذه ملك إبراهيم أن تعبد الله مخلصا له الدين تجمع بين الأمرين الإبادة والإخلاص فمن عبد الله فمن عبد الله ولم ولم يخلص أو لم ولم يخلص له الدين لم تكن إبادته لم تكن إبادته شيئاً فمن عبد الله فصام وحج وحج وصلى واعتمر وتصدق وزكى وفعل كثيرا من الطاعات لكنه لم يخلص لله عز وجل في ذلك إما لأنه فعل كل ذلك رياء أو سمعة أو أنه خلت عمله بشيء من الشرك كدعاء غير غير الله والاستغاثة بغير الله والذبح لغير الله فإن هذا لم يكن مخلصا في إبادته بل هو مشرك وليس على ملة إبراهيم عليه الصلاة والسلام. So this is important. Now. So the Sheikh goes into the next. Uh, in is going up now in in the tone and more detail. So the Sheikh says. So he says the original author. The original author says that what is Ibn Ibrahim. So we're continuing asking that question and going in more detail. He says that you worship Allah alone purely for his sake, right? And it is, and that's what the Mil Milat Ibrahim is, and that you worship Allah purely for the for his sake. You don't mix your worship with uh, with anything. You don't mix your worship with anything. Else. So he says, and and the Sheikh says, so two affairs uh, gather are gathered here or come together. He says. Worship and ikhlas. So alibada, which is worship, and alikhlas, which is um, um, sincerely uh, and purifying your worship. So it's only for Allah alone in this circumstance. Yeah. So the Sheikh says, whoever uh, worships Allah but but does not do it with sincerity and and purely for His sake, right? Then it's not worship. He has, well, then he hasn't worshipped him. He hasn't worshipped Allah. He hasn't worshipped Allah. So then the Sheikh says, so whoever worships Allah and fasts and makes the Hajj and makes the Umrah and prays and gives Sadaqah and pays his Zakat and he does, uh, he does many things from the different types of obedience, the obedient actions that we can do from all the good deeds that we can do. However, he does not do it purely for Allah's sake and for Allah alone, then it's uh, then it may be because he's done this, he's done these actions um, uh, in Riyadh, you know, for other people to see. So they say, oh, so and so, Fulan, oh, you know, he he prays really well, he does a lot of sadaqah, he does that for uh, for other people to see him doing it. So not doing it for Allah, but doing it for other people to see. 
him doing these good actions or so that people some atan or that people talk about him so he wants to be known so like they'll say for example uh, like oh uh, fulan oh he does really good actions he's telling other people other people telling other people talking about him so either he wants to be seen or he wants to be heard etc and so in this situation his deeds have been mixed they mixed with shirk this is shirk so the, uh, the his his deeds or his ibad his worship is being mixed right it's mixed it's been polluted uh, and so the shaykh gives us more examples he says for example other examples he says like uh, uh, supplicating to other than allah seeking aid from other than allah um um a verb uh, so a sacrificing for other than allah he says for the likes of these the, the, these are just uh, different types of worship aren't they he said the shaykh says so in that situation the person isn't mukhlis he isn't sincere in his worship to allah alone yeah because he's he's doing it he's mixing the worship so partly to allah partly to others you know this is mixing with worship and shirk this is the shaykh is saying so therefore the person who was described like this is not is not upon the way of ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam then the shaykh continues he says kathirun mim kathirun mim man yantasibuna ila al-islam al-yawma yaqauna fi shirk al-akbar min du'a'i ghayri Allah wa ibadatu wa ibadat al-kubur wal-adrihah wal-dhabh laha wal-nadhari laha wa tawaf biha wa tabarruk biha wal istighatha bil amwat wa ghayr dhalik wa hum yaqulun innahum muslimun ha ulai lam ya'rifu millata ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam allati alayha nabiyyuhum muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam lam ya'rifuha aw arafuha wa khalafuha ala basiratin wa liyadu billahi wa hadha ashad so then the shaykh says so from as many of the people was many of the people who ascribe themselves to al islam today they fall into the greater shirk as you know there's two types of shirk there's the lesser shirk and there's a greater shirk the one who falls into greater shirk is automatically leaves the fold of islam all of his actions are nullified and then if he repents if he realizes and repents he comes back into islam and you know he starts again with a bank balance of zero I've given that example before in the past thinking of a bank balance say you had 100,000 1 million web in your bank of hasanat and all of a sudden it's gone because you fell into the greater shirk and it nullified your islam it's, you know it's 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 from it is the great it's a null it's a great nullify of islam and it nullify completely nullify your deen and then we have um the lesser shirk uh, which uh, is covered in another book is worth reading uh, kitab tawhid and um by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab as well and um uh rahmallah and, and that book inshallah we will go through as well inshallah that's the plan and um uh, in there uh, all of this is explained but the lesser shirk does not take you out of the fold of islam but it's classed as a is a major sin but depending on the situation and on the intention of the person it can become greater shirk but that's a discussion for another day but it's worth knowing the difference at least uh uh in like in a, from an introductory point of view so we don't get confused um <clears throat> so then the shaykh says he mentions he goes for example greater shirk the greater shirk shirk al akbar for example uh, supplicating to other than allah uh, for example worshiping graves you know directing your worshiping uh, worship towards graves and tombs and that kind of thing sacrificing to other uh, than allah uh, making oaths to other than allah circumambulating um uh uh you know uh, graves and and uh, these places that that have not are not within the sharia to for us to do and not lawful for us to do and seeking blessings from such places like graves and uh, and, and and trees and what not stones and and everything else that people do you know that comes in the shirk al akbar and seeking aid from the dead uh, uh, and other than that so and and then he says he gives it goes, it goes the people who do this they say that oh you know we muslims they muslims however he says these uh, they don't know millat ibrahim they don't know the way of ibrahim i a tawhid and purifying your worship for allah and making it for allah alone 
just how Ibrahim alayhi salam did and the rest of the prophets and messengers did. Uh, so so that's important to know. Then the Shaykh continues and he says, uh, and so likewise how our Prophet uh, was upon the way of Ibrahim, a tawheed far away from shirk. So these kind of people, they, they, they don't know, they didn't know, they don't know uh, about a tawheed. Uh, they haven't learned it, they don't know. They, uh, or it could also be, he says, or it could be that they they know and they're gone against it. Um, they know and they know what's right and wrong in terms of these affairs, but they still go against it. And the Sheikh says, uh, uh, and you know, we seek refuge from Allah in this uh, or from this. And he says that this is severe because the person obviously who knows and then goes and does something, that's always worse than somebody who might be ignorant, you know. So um, the Sheikh mentions and he says that's more severe if somebody knowingly does it, uh, knowingly, do, uh, knowingly do something wrong. In that situation, is usually more is severe, more severe. Yeah. So the Sheikh continues. Says, "Famila to Ibrahim, la tukbal shirk bi ayy wajhin min al wujuh, wa man khalat amalahu bi shirk fa leisa ala amila to Ibrahim, wa in kana yintasib ulaiha wa yazm anhu Muslim fa alwajib an taarifa amila to Ibrahim wa an taamal biha wa an taltazimha." بأن تعبد الله مخلصا له الدين لا يكون في إبادتك شيء من الشرك الأصغر أو الأكبر. So then the Sheikh says in this paragraph here, this paragraph here, he says so the Milah of Ibrahim, the way of Ibrahim, the way of Ibrahim, it does not accept shirk. It does not accept shirk. Shirk is not accepted from any type of shirk from those types of shirk that are there that exist. So whoever mixes his deeds, his worship, for example, with shirk, then he, then this person who does this is not upon the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Even if he was to ascribe himself to Milat Ibrahim. So if somebody said to us, oh yeah, I'm upon the way of Ibrahim, Ibrahim alayhi salam and upon the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, you know, upon Tawheed, and then we see him call, supplicating to Uddin Allah, you know, doesn't matter if this if somebody says something, but the the actions are saying otherwise, then it doesn't matter because if somebody is committing these acts of shirk, then he is not from, uh, he's not upon the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam, al Hanifiyah milat Ibrahim, and so uh, uh, even if this person ascribes to it, and that he uh, considered himself or thought he uh, and he thinks that he is a Muslim. So the Sheikh says, so it's a obligatory, it's obligatory for us uh, that we know um, uh, what Millet Ibrahim is. And now I think we have a good, we do have a good understanding of it, what Millet Ibrahim is, and that we 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 learn and we we work and we 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 carry our deeds according to the Millet Ibrahim, the way of Ibrahim, and that we stick to it, and that we and that we worship Allah sincerely and purely. Yeah. Not sharing any of our worship with anybody else. It's only 100% for Allah. All of our worship is 100% for Allah. Ikhlas. And so there isn't anything of shirk in our worship. Whether it be from the lesser shirk like we mentioned or whether it be from the greater shirk. Our worship needs to be purely for Allah alone and that's the way it should be. You know, every day up until uh, your last days and up until death. That's how we should be. So the Shaykh continues and says, هذه ملة إبراهيم عليه السلام الحنيفية التي أعرضت عن الشرك بالكلية وأقبلت على التوحيد بكلياتها أن تعبد الله مخلصا له الدين. So then the Sheikh says, so this is the way of Ibrahim, al hanifiyyah that turns away from shirk in its completeness and and goes towards Tawheed and, and is upon, the person is upon Tawheed in all its completeness. And that is to worship Allah alone, as we mentioned, uh, alone and not sourcing any partners with him, not mixing any type of worship with other than Allah. It's all for Allah all of the time. 
So then the Shaykh continues, says, قَوْلُهُ وَبِذَلِكَ أَمَرَ اللَّهُ الْإِشَارَةُ تُرْجِوُ إِلَى قَوْلِهِ أَنْ تَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِسَ النَّهُ الدِّينَ أي وَبِإِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ مُخْلِسَ النَّهُ الدِّينَ أَمَرَ اللَّهُ جَمِيعَ الْخَلْقِ أَمَرَ اللَّهُ جَمِيعَ النَّاسِ أَرْبَعَهُمْ وَعَجَمَهُمْ وَعَجَمَهُمْ أَبْيَضَهُمْ وَأَسْوَدَهُمْ كُلَّ النَّاسِ مِنْ أَهْدِ آدَمَ إِلَى مِنْ أَهْدِ آدَمَ إِلَى آخِرِ بَشَرٍ فِي الدُّنْيَا كُلُّهُمْ أَمَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِإِبَادَتِهِ بِإِبَادَتِهِ مَعَ الْإِخْلَاصِ بِإِبَادَتِهِ مَعَ الْإِخْلَاصِ فِي الْإِبَادَةِ أَوْ بِإِبَادَتِهِ مَعَ الْإِخْلَاصِ فِي الْإِبَادَةِ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى يا أيها الناس أبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون الذي جعل لكم الأرض فراشا والسماء بناء وأنزل من السماء ماء فأخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم فلا تجعلوا لله أندادا وأنتم تعلمون. So that's from Surah Al-Baqarah. We will go through the translation, verse twenty-one and twenty-two. أنه لا ند له ولا شبيه له ولا نذير له ولا كفو ولا كفو ولا كفو له فهذا نهي عن الشرك الأكبر وعن الشرك الأصغر أمر الله بذلك جميع الناس من أولهم إلى آخرهم. So then the Sheikh mentions and continues and says he mentions the um, he quotes the um, the original text for بذلك أمر الله and by that and that's what Allah commands with. So uh, the Sheikh says this is an indication that takes us to um, his speech where he, where the original author mentioned um, you, you, that we worship Allah, that we worship Allah purely, just for him. Uh, and we mentioned this, we understand this already. Uh, and that uh, the worship of Allah is purely done for Allah. And it's, uh, the worship is directly, is directed to Allah, all of it, no, not mixing with anybody else, anything else, just for Allah alone. And that's what the the all of the creation were commanded with. And Allah commanded all of the people, uh, the Arabs, from the Arabs, and from other than the Arabs, from the white people, from and from the black people, or everybody, all of the people from the time of Adam, right, to the last of the people that are going to exist before the uh, Yom Al Qiyamah, all of them have been clearly commanded to worship Allah alone and purely for his sake in the dunya. So all of all of these people, everybody basically, all from the khalq, from the creation, have been advised, you know, from, from the jinn of mankind, have been commanded, sorry, um, with uh, worshipping Allah with ikhlas, with pure, you know, purely for his sake and not committing acts of shirk. So then uh, we arrive to this ayah that we just read. So let's go there. And that's from Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 21 and 22. So if you, if you go there, let's read this, inshallah, to read the translation. O mankind, worship your Lord, Allah, who created you and those who were before you, so that you may become Al-Mutakun, the pious, who has made the earth a resting place for you, and the sky as a canopy, and sent down water, rain, from the sky, and brought forth there with fruits as a provision for you. Then do not set up rivals unto Allah in worship, while you know that he alone has the right to be worshipped. So that's very clear to us. That's directly there, directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's, that's clear as day for anybody that to understand. Um, so then uh, the Sheikh says here, he was leading on from uh, the, uh, that ayah that he mentioned, uh, Habibullah he says, and so therefore that he, has no, he has no rival. He has no uh, associate. Or anything like that, he alone deserves to be worshipped, and that shirk obviously is clearly now here, and that we and that the khalq, the creation, mankind, and jinn will turn away from um, shirk and stay far from it and do not fall into it, whether it's the great shirk or whether it's the lesser shirk. The the sheikh mentions here that it's clear that this ayah is telling us that, and 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 therefore we we're commanded. All of the people were commanded. From the start of them until the end of them, from the first of them and the last of them, they've been commanded with a tawheed uh, uh, and purely worshiping Allah uh, alone, with not associate any partners with Him and not mixing their worship with anybody else. Only for Allah. All worship is for Allah. 
Then the Shaykh continues and says, قوله وخلقهم لها أي لإبادته وحده لا شريك لك سبحانه خلقوا من أجلها ذلك كما في قول تعالى وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون وأمروا بذلك في قوله تعالى يا أيها الناس أبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم هذا معنى قول هذا معنى قول الشيخ خلقهم لها و وأمرهم بها جمع جمع الأمرين أو جمع الأمرين في قوله بذلك أمر الله جميع الناس وخلقهم لها كما قال تعالى وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون فقوله تعالى وما خلقت الجن والإنس الله هو هو الخالق هو الذي خلق خلق الأشياء كلها ومن ذلك أنه خلق الجن والإنس وأعطاهم القول وكلفهم بإبادته وحدها وحده لا شريك له خصهم بالأمر بإبادته لأن الله أعطاهم قولا وأعطاهم ما ما يميزون به بين الضار والنافع والحق والباطل والخلق الأشياء وخلق الأشياء كلها لمصالحهم ومنافعهم قال تعالى وسخر لكم ما في السماوات وما في الأرض جميعا منه كل مسخر كل مسخر لبني آدم من أجل أن يستعين به على ما خلق من أجله وهو عبادة الله سبحانه وتعالى وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون. That's a long paragraph, so let's go through that. So then the Sheikh says he quotes the he quotes some text from the original uh, book um, uh, from the original author and says wa khalaqahum laha and and he created them for it. Uh, what does that mean then? He's going to explain that. So, and, and, and we were, so essentially we were created, Allah created us for it. Um, and the Sheikh says, i.e. to worship Allah alone and not associate any partners with him in our worship. So the Sheikh says they were created for that purpose. We were created for that purpose. And so that's why in the ayah here, Surah Al-Dhariyat, verse 56, well-known ayah, yeah, it's quite well-known, yeah. And, and, and it's clear here uh, what our purpose, what our purpose is. Why did Allah create us? Um, and Allah says, I did not create jinn and mankind to, to worship me, essentially. Uh, so Allah created us. He's, Allah says he created us. He created the jinn and mankind, uh, except that we worship him. That's our purpose in this life, to worship Allah. And that's where Allah's clarified that for us there in his speech. And we were we also commanded uh, uh, with that as well here. And the Sheikh mentions, Ya ayyuhan nasu budu rabbakum ulladhi khalakakum. So, O oh people, O oh, oh people, worship your Lord who created you. From Surah Al-Baqarah, remember we read the, this ayah, uh, the whole ayah actually uh, earlier on in the lesson. Uh, so you can go back to that if you need to review. Um, then the Sheikh continues and he says, so the meaning of what the Sheikh is saying here, as in he's talking about the original author, he says that um, that he created us for it and commanded us uh, with it. So Allah created us for worshipping him and he commanded us to worship him. So these two affairs come together in 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 uh, in his speech and, and, and in terms of the ayah that we read. And he says, and by that then uh, Allah... Uh, Commanded all of the people, um, commanded all of the people, and they created them for to, to in order to worship him. As Allah said in the Quran, as as we mentioned again in the same ayah, uh, Sheikh mentions again, "Wama khalaqtu al-jinn wal insa illa liyabudun." But then the Sheikh says, "So what does wama khalaqtu al-jinn wal insa mean?" He says, "Allah is the Khalik. Allah is the Creator of everything, and He is the one." Who created everything, all of it, everything that exists, He is its creator. And from that, then uh, He, and from that, and from all the things I created, and of that is the jinn and, and ins, uh, jinn and, and and humankind. And He gave them intelligence. He gave them intellect. Allah gave us intellect, and Allah charged us with worshiping Him alone and not associating partners with Him. And that affair, and that command is, uh, is specific 
in terms of worshipping him because Allah uh, gave his creation from the from the mankind the jinn intellect and gave them uh, what what uh, and gave them the ability to distinguish from uh, that which is from uh, you know uh, harm and benefit and and the truth and falsehood and the, Allah also created uh, things all of these other things that surround us for our benefit for our benefit for our benefit and Allah said in the Quran وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مِّنْ So let's go to Surah Al-Jathiya because that's a different ayah as mentioned now. So let's take, let's look at the translation of that so we can understand what's being said. And has subjected to you all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth. It is all as a favor and kindness from him. Verily in it, in it are signs for the people who think deeply. So that's in regards to all the other things that are created around us. Uh, and uh, these things have been, uh, have been subservient for us. So all these things are being created and they're subservient to us that we uh, and the Sheikh says to Bani Adam in order for them to uh, you know take help from what those those things that Allah's placed for to aid us in in uh, in in uh, carrying out our duties which is what as we mentioned earlier and uh, which Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions so that we're able to worship him right so all of these things around us, the night and the day, the sun and the moon, and everything else, these things, they help us, uh, uh, they help us and enable us to worship Allah. Yeah? And Allah has put them there for that purpose. Um, and at the same time, as in the ayahs mentioned as well, that for us to, um, you know, ponder over deeply and to reflect upon the things that are there, you know? They all point towards Allah, the Creator. Then the Shaykh continues and he says, وَالْجِنُّ عَالَمْ مِنْ عَالَمْ الْغَيْبِ uh, وَالْجِنُّ عَالَمْ مِنْ عَالَمْ الْغَيْبِ لَا نَرَاهُمْ وَهُمْ مُكَلَّفُونَ بِالْإِبَادَةِ وَمَنْهِيُونَ عَنْ, uh, عن الشِّرْكِ وَعَنِ الْمَأْسِيَةِ مِثْلِ بَنِي آدَمْ لَكِنْ يَخْتَلِفُونَ عَنْ بَنِي آدَمْ فِي خِلْقَةِ So then the Shaykh mentions, obviously we mentioned insan, obviously like the humans. Then obviously remember in the ayah, he's mentioned jinn as well. So the Sheikh mentions, he says, so jinn are from the creation as well. Uh, of, and, and they're from, uh, from the unseen. So those things that belong to the unseen, they are part of that. They are from the unseen. We don't see them. The Sheikh says we don't see them, but they are uh, charged with uh, worship. Allah has also commanded them to worship him alone, just like we have been. And also they have been prohibited from shirk and disobedience. Just like Bani Adam has, just, just like we have. However, the, the, there's a difference, and the difference uh, between Bani Adam and uh, uh, b between us and them is in terms of uh, uh, what we've been created. So, so the Sheikh continues and he says, "Amma min nahiyatil awamir wa nawahi fahum mithlu Bani Adam ma'murun wa manhiyun wal jinnu alim min alim al ghayb la narahum lakinna hum mawjudun wal ins hum Banu Adam." سموا بالإنس لأن بعضهم يأنس ببعض يجتمعون ويتعلفون والجن سموا جنا من الاجتنان وهو الاختفاء ومنه, ومن ومنه الجنين في البطن لأنه مختف وجنه الليل إذا ستره والمجن ما يتخذ للوقاية به في الحرب من السحام وغيرها فهو يستر حامل فهو يستر حامله فالاجتنان والجنان هو الشيء الخفي المستتر فالجن مستترون عنا لا نراهم. So then the Sheikh explains a bit more about the jinn here because obviously we mentioned that. So the Sheikh says he goes as as for um as from the from the perspective of um commandments and prohibitions then uh, it's like for like the same we uh, the jinn uh, the man kind of jinn have been commanded and 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 also have been uh, commanded to uh, stay away so they've been commanded with commandments same way so just like we've been commanded to worship Allah alone as we mentioned some examples so of the jinn just like we've been uh, uh, you know commanded to stay away from shirk and stay away from it and disobedience same thing for the jinn as well 
So in these affairs, it's the same. Um, but then the Sheikh Benji says, but the jinn, they're from the unseen, from the world of the unseen. We don't see them. However, they're there, they're present. And um, he says, al-ins or insan, uh, and al-ins, uh, he says, al-ins or insan, that's Bani Adam. That's, our, that's the children of Adam. And he says they're named uh, with uh, the word ins or insan, ins because uh, because um, you take some of them take comfort in others, like as in they gather, you know, you know, in company, and that's how we be created, you know, and um, uh, uh, and 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 so that's why they call ins or insan because of this reason, and the jinn were named jinn, jinnen or jinn uh, uh, from uh, the word. Uh, meaning it means uh, hidden, hidden. I think that, that that's the easiest way to say hidden. And and from the these similar words is al janin, which is in the button. For example, al janin is a fetus; is hidden. You don't see it. Yeah, same kind of thing. The words are related. I think that's what the sheikh is getting at here. Also, uh, he says that, for example, how uh, uh, like in the night things are hidden. Yeah, everything hidden. Also, he mentions al mijan. Another word which is similar from the similar root al mijan like a shield, and he says uh, it's because the the shield like as in when you're in the war you have a shield with you because the shield covers and it, it covers and it hides um, it's the, the one who's carrying it. it it helps him defend so it covers him it hides him and so he gives some examples of the word just to help us understand that it means it's from hidden so uh, the jinn they are hidden uh, and that's what jinn actually means from the word to, to be hidden and so therefore, you know, we, we don't see them. <clears throat> so the Shaykh continues and he says, وَهُمْ عَلَمْ مَوْجُودْ مِنْ مَنْ أَنْكَرَهُمْ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ لِأَنَّهُمْ مُكَذِّبٌ لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَلِإِجْمَاءِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَقَدْ بَيِّنَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ أَنَّهُ لَمْ يَخْلُقْ لم لم يخلق الجن والإنس إلا لبادته لا لشيء آخر. So then the Shaykh mentions an important point. I think it's always a good reminder for us um, here about similar topics and things like this. Um, <clears throat> we might even face these challenges at work and other people who are not from Islam or maybe are ignorant. But the Sheikh says, um, so as we've established, the jinn are from the world of the unseen. We don't see them, but they are present. So the Sheikh says, whoever says that they don't exist, for example, or they're not there, they don't exist. It's all just a lie or, you know, we don't see them, they don't exist. Then he says that this person's a kafir, is a disbeliever. Automatically, somebody says that he becomes a disbeliever. Uh, and so that explains why. The Sheikh says why, because he says, because this person who says that, like the statements like this, he has lied. He's lied upon Allah and the Rasul. And it also has gone against the consensus of all of the Muslims. He's gone against the consensus of the Muslims. And the Sheikh says, and Allah has clarified as a wajal, Allah has clarified as a wajal that he, uh, that he did not create the jinn nor the ins but to worship him. That's the pr primary purpose of why the jinn and the insan were created, were to worship Allah and nothing else. That's the primary reason. So then the Sheikh continues, says, فَهُوَ لَمْ يَخْلُقُ لِأَجْلِ أَنْ يَنْفَعُ أَوْ يَذُرُّهُ أَوْ يَأْتُ أَوْ uh, 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 so then the Sheikh mentions here in this paragraph, he says that basically, uh, you know, that um, Allah didn't create us and the jinn, um, you know, to benefit Allah in any way or that they would harm Allah in any way or that, you know, uh, you, know uh, you know, there's a need. Essentially what's being said here is that Allah is free from needing us. But the reason why Allah created us is that we worship Him. Why? Because we need to worship Him. He doesn't need us. He doesn't need us. And so then uh, the Sheikh mentions, uh, quotes this ayah for us from Surah Al-Dhariyat. So let's go there. 
Let's read both ayahs, 57 and 58. I seek not any provision from them, i.e. provision for themselves or for my creatures, nor do I ask that they should feed me, i.e. feed themselves or my creatures. Verily, Allah is the all provider, owner of power, the most strong. So that's clear for us there. Then the Shaykh continues. Um, and we're on the last page, I believe, yeah. So let's finish this, inshallah. Um, so then the Shaykh continues, says, Allah is not in the world, خلق الجن والإنس لشيء واحد فقط وهو أن يعبدون وهو ليس بحاجة إلى عبادتهم وإنما هم المحتاجون إليها لأنهم إذا عبدوا الله أكرمهم وأدخلهم الجنة فمصلحة العبادة راجعة إليهم ومضرة المعصية عائدة إليهم أما الله جل وعلا لا تضره طاعة المطيء ولا مأسية العاصي قال سبحانه وتعالى إن إن تكفروا أنتم ومن في الأرض جميعا فإن الله لا غن فإن الله لا غني حميد الله لا تضره مأسية العاصي ولا تنفعه طاعة المطيء وإنما هذا قد إلى الخلق أنفسهم إن إن أطاعه إن تفعوا وإن أصوه تضر so then uh, the Shaykh continues and expands on what we just mentioned. And so he's saying here that Allah is free from needing us in any way, uh, anything. Allah is free and rich and free from all wants. The purpose of us being here is to worship Allah alone um, because we need that. Why? Because if we worship Allah alone and follow his commandments and 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 and, you know, stay away from the prohibitions and these things, then, then we will be successful, you know, granted Jannah. And we need that. And if we, for example, um, uh, do all kinds of sins, then we're only harming ourselves and in the end we'll be in the hellfire. You know? So so it, it comes, it, everything returns to the, the, the slave of Allah, the servant. Every, so it depends what it does. It's upon him. He needs to, he needs Allah, basically. Allah doesn't need him. And then uh, the Shaykh uh, quotes an ayah from Surah Ibrahim. So let's go there and let's read that. And Musa and Moses said, If you disbelieve you all on earth together, then verily Allah is rich, free of all wants, owner of all praise. So that's clear. That clarifies to us what's being mentioned. Then the Shaykh um, concludes here and he says, uh, for this chapter, he says, وَمَأْنَا يَعْبُدُونَ يُوَحِدُونَ أَيْ يُفَرِّدُونِي بِالْإِبَادَةِ فَالْإِبَادَةُ بِالتَّوْحِيدِ بِمَعْنَى وَاحِدَ التَّوْحِيدِ يُفَسِّرُ بِالْإِبَادَةِ وَالْإِبَادَةُ تُفَسِّرُ بِالتَّوْحِيدِ وَمَعْنَاهُمَا وَاحِدٌ فَفِي هَذَا رَدٌّ عَلَى مَنْ فَسَّرَ التَّوْحِيدَ بِأَنَّهُ الْإِقْرَارُ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْخَالِقُ الرَّزَّاقُ الْمُحْيِي الْمُمِيتُ الْمُدَبِّرُ فَهَذَا لَيْسَ هُوَ التَّوْحِيدُ الَّذِي خُلِقَ الْخَلْقُ مِنْ أَجْلِهِ وَإِنَّمَا خُلِقَ الْخَلْقُ مِنْ أَجْلِ تَوْحِيدِ الْإِبَادَةِ وَهُوَ تَوْحِيدُ الْأُلُوهِيَّةِ أما من أقر بتوحيد الربوبية فقط فإنه ليس موحدا وليس من أهل الجنة بل هو من أهل النار ولأنه لم يأتي بالتوحيد الذي خلق من أجله والإبادة. Right. So, so then the final. This is quite. It's very important. So um, the Sheikh mentions here. He says. So what's the meaning of worship? He says the meaning of worship is is يوحدون. That you single. It means to single out. Um, Allah in all of our worship, all of our worship is directed to Allah alone, one hundred percent. And and He says al ibadah. Therefore, then worship is tawhid, and tawhid is worship. They both mean the same thing. And so so they explain each other, as we can see. And the Sheikh says says so for and it also it's um uh. Um, a refutation upon those who say that a tawheed, all it is, is, um, is uh, you know, affirming that Allah is the, is the creator, is the provider, is the one who gives life, is the one who gives death, is the one who takes care of all the affairs in the universe. It says this is not tawheed. Uh, and, and, then he, and then the Sheikh mentions that, you know, that we, it's not the tawheed that we were actually created for. But in Nama, it says, and as for, and rather it is, uh, it is, it's it's a tawheed a rububiya. Yeah. So the reason, so what we were created for uh, is to worship Allah alone. This refers to what's called 
Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah, directing all worship is a Tawheed of worship, al-Ibadah, and, and, and um, a person who says that, no, a Tawheed or al-Ibadah, all it is is believing in that Allah is the, the creator, the provider, um, the one who gives life, the one who, 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 who uh, uh, you know, gives death, takes people away, uh, you know, and all these kinds of things which you mentioned, and the one who controls the, the universe and takes care of the affairs, all this. He says, this is, so, th this is, comes under the Tawheed of Lordship. And the one who only believes in that and does not believe in the Tawheed al uluhiyah which is to do with worship and singling out Allah in all forms of worship, then this person is not from the Muslims. And he's not from the people of Jannah. So there's a clarification there that the Sheikh makes. Um, um, because no doubt, just before we leave, that the, that the Mushrikun, even today, and even at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu the polities, they believed that Allah is, you know, they believed in the Lordship of Allah, but they would not, the, the thing that they would not go to, the ones who remained upon their falsehood, is that they would not turn to Allah and single out all of their worship to Allah alone. They knew what it meant. They knew what La ilaha illallah meant. And um, and so uh, the Sheikh clarifies that here for us. So inshallah, we'll stop there, bidna ta'ala, and we will uh, continue uh, the next chapter next week at the same time, bidnillah. Subhanakullah wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, wa astaghfiruka wa tubi ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.